Anywhere in the world today, someone is wearing or using something that is made from cotton. It is the most versatile resource used worldwide, and some of the very best cotton is grown in the Mid-South of the United States. At the center of that region is Memphis, Tennessee, home of the Blues, Elvis, and home of the Mid-South's largest cotton exchange district for nearly 100 years. Cotton is a soft, white, fibrous substance that surrounds the seeds of a tropical and subtropical plant that is used as textile fiber and thread for sewing. The seeds are planted in spring and they grow into green, bushy shrubs about a meter in height. The plants briefly grow pink and cream-colored flowers that once pollinated drop off and are replaced with cotton bulls. Cotton used to be picked by hand. Everyone in the family was required to help. Newly picked cotton was stuffed into nine-foot sacks that could weigh up to 30 pounds. John Daniel Russ invented the first practical spindle cotton picker in the late 1930s. Today, equipment that is used to pick, transport, and filter cotton are cotton pickers, module builders, bull buggies, module trucks, and cotton gins. Having more equipment makes the work quicker and more efficient. Memphis was founded in 1812 on the Mississippi River's Four Chickasaw Bluff as a shipping port for both cotton and the African slaves whose hard labor was the foundation of the southern economy. As the city burgeoned into a global hub of cotton commerce, a vast group of people were drawn here in search of work. Merchants, insurers, aspiring entrepreneurs, former slaves, sharecroppers, and laborers migrated to Memphis from across the south. Cotton has played a large and dominant role in the life of Memphis. The city of Memphis and the cotton trade in Memphis began around the same time. Memphis was the natural site for cotton to grow and prosper. The Memphis Cotton Exchange was founded in April 20, 1874. Cotton was brought to the market by flatboats and steamboats. They traveled on the Wolf, Mississippi, and Tennessee rivers. The levee and ox carts were used to unload the cotton that came by riverboat. The cotton was placed on sidewalks in front of cotton offices before it was moved to warehouses. Memphis was growing as the cotton capital and many men realized the need for some type of trade association. The men were already aware of New York and New Orleans through the success of their exchanges. The Memphis Cotton Exchange was mostly interested in advancing cotton and trading it. The exchange membership included most of the important men in the city. The first designated president of the Memphis Cotton Exchange was W.B. Galbraith. The city's dilemmas were discussed in the exchange's meetings and they took part in charity drives frequently. Memphis was the largest inland cotton market in either America or Europe. Victor Cuneo started working as a marker on the Cotton Exchange's blackboard in 1927. Blackboards are used to post the quotations of all the future markets, current spot prices, Jennings, acreage, consumption, and any statistic necessary to the conduct of the cotton industry. Cuneo left the Merchants Exchange and came to the Cotton Exchange. At that time, he was one of four markers employed. Victor said, the thing is, traders on the floor want to see any change in the market instantly, the moment it happens. They don't want to wait until you can climb up on the catwalk and write it on the blackboard, and the computer marketers are fast. He was replaced by a computer in 1978. One-room quarters were not sizable for the association, so on September 15, 1875, they enlarged the space at the same location. More involvement, growth, and increased activities resulted in the need for even larger offices and room than the site had to offer. A location was selected on 2nd Street between Court and Madison. It was a brick building that stood four stories high. It contained diverse exchange offices, a telegraph office, a signal service, and numerous railroad and business offices. It cost over $150,000. In 1909, the Cotton Exchange and the Merchants Exchange decided to construct a larger exchange and office building on the site at 2nd and Madison. When the exchange building was completed, it was known as the head of Memphis skyscrapers. 
It was the tallest, largest, and most current office building in all of Memphis and in the surrounding states as well. In 1913, the first automobile brought its first load of cotton, ushering in a new era of cotton transporting. With railroads and new automobiles, the mighty Mississippi wasn't as important as it once had been, but luckily for the exchange, Memphis was still located in a good location for future roads that would converge on the city. In 1919, it became noticeable that the building at Madison and Second was far too distant from the center of cotton activity. The exchange moved to temporary quarters at 66 South Front. They dived into the search for a new location. They picked a $140,000 building at Front Street and Union Avenue. The floor of the exchange is a high ceiling room with large windows that can be opened to look at both Front Street and Union Avenue. The other walls are covered with boards that are used to post the quotations of all the future markets, current spot prices, Jennings, acreage, consumption, and any statistic necessary to the conduct of the cotton industry. On the upper floors, there are office and sample rooms. The Front Street location had oversized skylights inserted into the ceiling of its top floor at various angles to admit the sun's brightest rays at different times of the day. Later, the government recommended they be set at 23 degrees north for the truest light. No one classed cotton in overcast weather. Other crops could be sold no matter what the conditions were outside, but not cotton. Each bell was graded by hand and assigned a corresponding value. By the 1940s, the exchange was handling 31% of the United States cotton production. The spot sales by the exchange's members for the first year of that decade were almost equal to the other nine appointed spot cotton markets. The large amount was collected through the successful efforts of the Freight and Transportation Committee. They worked hard to improve the transportation arrangements under which cotton would be handled through the Memphis cotton market. In 1933, the Merchants Market and the Cotton Exchange joined together in the building at Front and Union. The Merchants Market continued to use the building after the Cotton Exchange departed. In 1950, due to orders being unacceptable, all exchanges instantly closed and the Cotton Exchange was disabled. On March 8th, the exchanges propelled and business resumed. 1959 was the year that the government began the A and B program. The exchange was responsible for ensuring various requirements and obligations that needed to be met. Old things have been replaced by new things. Adding machines and manual typewriters were upgraded to electronic calculators and listening machines. Many improvements were made and many more are yet to come. Nearly 150 years later, only a few rundown buildings remain of the Memphis Cotton Exchange. On one there is a marker that reads, There are hearts as soft as fluff that assume a manner gruff just to hide their real fine stuff on Front Street. <laughs>